Hello, Kelly Lover here. Uh, this is part two of my uh, small knives that I love. Um, I originally just wanted this to be one video, but uh, just in talking about the first three knives, uh, even trying to keep it short, I ended up at uh, almost five minutes. So I wanted to do this in two parts, just so the, so the uh, uploading process would be a little easier. Um, the first two knives I'm going to show you in this video are almost identical. They're both made by Frost Cutlery which uh, if you're a knife enthusiast or know much about knives you're going you know frost cutlery not so great uh, and you're right for the most part frost makes a lot of kind of cheesy knives uh, not very quality pieces at all uh, but this this one here is a steel warrior and these have been uh, getting very very good uh, good reviews uh, for the price both of these knives are ten dollar knives they're both uh, these designs are uh, copper locks, which is a copper head type uh, frame with the two blades, and a, uh, but they lock. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this first one is a Steel Warrior, and the second one is the Frost family uh, line. Uh, just uh, the main difference is really it's just a different shield here. Uh, you know, they have the round shield and then that style shield. And then uh, a little bit of crimping in the bolster there. Just a little different design, but it's basically the same quality, same knife. Uh, the prices are very similar. Maybe a dollar off, maybe a dollar more for the uh, uh, Steel Warrior. And uh, this Steel Warrior has stag uh, scales, although they come in a variety, a large variety of uh, different different materials, different colored bones and whatnot. Uh, this Frost Family line one is a uh, uh, Cape Buffalo Horn, the scales. So, uh, uh, main blade opens up and as you can see neither one I actually got these not too long ago neither one of these are used they still have uh, the uh, they come with this the steel warrior rather comes with the uh, little sticker there and I could see the the uh, video is blurry but uh, it basically just says um, the uh, tested 56 to 58 Rockwell and then it's an arrow sticker that's pointing to a little dot and that's where they uh, they have a um, they put this under the Rockwell testing to uh, test the hardness of the steel and uh, which is kind of nice you know not many not many companies do that per e you know for each knife but uh, anyway talking about the knife you know, the main blade here and most uh, slip joints which this is actually not uh, you know you just open the blade and the back spring would kind of keep it in place and then you would fold it up but this is actually locked right now uh, now to unlock it you push on this secondary blade and by pushing down on this blade you're depressing the lock then you can close this main blade so I don't I'm I like slip joints I can appreciate them but I really am a fan of uh, any kind of locking mechanism whatsoever uh, so this is actually pretty neat and you know you, there's no lock back I don't know what this design this lock is actually called but it's pretty innovative I like it uh, like I said it's kinda hidden this is locked up there's no way that's uh, that's not gonna close on you and don't worry I'm not gonna cut myself <laughs> Uh, and again, you just push down on the secondary blade, and that depresses the lock. And then the secondary blade itself is a, uh, a Warncliffe design. So it's good. You have a small, you have a small secondary blade, you know, for certain cutting tasks. And this does not lock. This is just a, like a slip joint. The back spring uh, just kind of keeps it in place. And then uh, once again, that main clip point blade, a uh, little bit longer, that uh, locks for you. So you're. Uh, you're secure and you're cutting. Um, so pushing down and then closing it. And this uh, this other one, about the same price, like I said, uh, same exact style, same exact locking mechanism. These are called lock, uh, copper locks. And uh, same deal, you push down that secondary blade and that's what unlocks the main blade. So I just thought those were pretty cool. Uh, the third knife here is made by Bear Cutlery. It has, it has a small Damascus blade. And you can see in my hand, it's not not all that of a uh, big knife. It's not tiny, but uh, certainly on the smaller side. You know, a little gentleman's knife. Keep this in your pocket or or slacks. Let's say you uh, go into a a nice dinner or some uh, nice occasion, wearing a suit or just um, you know a nice outfit. Just slip this in your pocket. Um, like I said, small drop point uh, Damascus blade. Um, one one side here has a uh, green uh, wood, green uh, color wood, and the other side has a reddish brown colored wood. 
Uh, I had bought this myself for Christmas, hence the green and red. Uh, just treated myself this smaller knife. Sometimes I'll, I'll put this. It's just, I think it's a classy knife. Damascus to me is always classy. It's very nice. Um, and like I said, it's a pretty thin profile. You know, drop this in your pocket. You always have a blade on you, but uh, something you can pull out maybe in a restaurant to cut something or in public, and people aren't going to freak out on you, you know. Uh, and the very last knife here is a very cheap knife. Oh, by the way, this, this is about a $25 knife, a little under $25, uh, but very classy in my opinion. This last knife here is a cheap knife. Uh, this was 5 bucks. This is made by Rough Rider. Uh, they deal with imports. It's a Chinese knife. Um, as far as crappy knives go, this is a pretty good one, in my opinion. This is a uh, three-bladed Stockman, small Stockman. So you can see, very small in my hand. Um, the, the blades came fairly sharp. The quality, I think, is pretty good. I actually got this just because it has black linen micarta scales, which is not seen very often at all, uh, hardly ever, on uh, slip joints. So that's really why I bought this one. Um, like you see, three three bladed Stockman. Um, it, the quality, you know, it's a five dollar knife, so you can't expect too much. But uh, I actually like this a lot. Um, very very small, you know. Close it up, throw this in your pocket. Uh, you know, it's a cool knife. Uh, cheap knives don't have to be. I mean, for the most part, you get what you pay for. But uh, cheap knives aren't always total crap. And uh, this. Rough Rider, some people really appreciate Rough Rider knives because they don't have a whole lot to spend, but they don't want to get some, you know, flea market special. And, um, I think this is nice, you know, for what it is. It's a nice knife. Um, so again, if, you know, if you like Rough Rider designs, uh, as far as the uh, lower, lower end knives go in general, um, it's not that bad. It's the, it, uh, put it this way, it's probably the best of the worst. Uh, all the way down in the very, very low uh, price range. So, uh, you know, if you liked any any of these, uh, the way they look. If you're look, if you're interested in these, check out the um, Steel Warrior in particular brand. Uh, the Frost Family series not so bad, but for your money, even though it's only ten bucks or you know fifteen dollars, depending on what kind of knife you get, Steel Warrior or the Steel Warrior uh, is your best bet, best bang for the buck as far as the cheap knives go. So, uh, hope this is informative, and, uh, thank you for your time.